There we go. We should be um, bigger. Okay. I've, <laughs> I've now got the wrong screen on. <laughs> See settings in advance. Okay, settings. I, I've started streaming again there, Dan. Okay, yeah. Nice. All, all right, right. Well, I'm good live look. again. Lovely. Dan, you've also gone a little bit thing away. Are we a little bit bigger now? We should be a little bit bigger. Oh, blimey. I've got to refresh mine now. That's it. Refresh it. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. This week's been... This, today's is absolutely fantastic. Wonderful. That's right what then. happens. I it come on your show and everything saved. just goes to crap. <laughs> I have, I've saved it. I've done it. I've tried my damn best to do it. When Danny sorts this out, we'll go back to the same size. And I'm still on the wrong one. You can just get the staff these days. I'm so you sorry. Stuff, <laughs> We've got the wonderful vaping with Vic. Um, right, we're, we're carrying on. We'll just carry on. And Dan, I, I have to sort out what you're doing there, brother. Um, oh, okay. I should as well, should I? <laughs> My- I saved as well. I don't know why that didn't work. So what am I on? I'm on the um, Rincon with the keys stacked RTA by Tony B. I thought I'd uh, drag that out while you're here. I'm loving that. You're, you're brown nose as well, then. But yeah, you've got to do it, haven't you? You've got to do it. Um, with a little bit of Nova Vapes um, grape ice. Oh, I've then nice got um, the um, top side with the nudge on top. I'm loving that. With a little bit of Dr. Salt cider. They've come out with like a beer range, which I'm really enjoying. They've done a bit of stout. They've also Very got um, a cider, a rum, and a, a beer, which is quite nice. Ooh, I've got again, the good. Rinko. Yeah, like uh, this is the X Mesh Pro. Um, this has got some of your major flavours in there, which is really nice. Uh, this is the Beetle Juice. Um, I'm really loving these mods. It's got the, the look of like the Tesla or the Puma. Got a nice feel to it. Um, and then I have got... This is really nice. It is the um, Gearbox, I think it's called, by Vapemon. I only come in this week. Uh, and it's a, a, one of them wireless ones, you know, when you charge them. Bang, stick it on there and it charges it up. I, I love the, the actual colours on that. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, it looks really, really nice. Um, and that's roughly what I'm actually vaping on. Are you waiting for the me, shortest, Dan? You were the oh. shortest what you're vaping on tonight, Ed. It is, yeah. Uh, it's, it's one of the things, you know, when things don't quite go right. It, you know, it just does your head in, doesn't it? Do you have it, Tony? Obviously, you must have been on loads of live shows. Have you, have you had it? Yeah, I've been on a bunch of them. I, I don't do them myself. So when that when trouble happens, I'm like, good on you, man. Take care of that. Yeah. You get it all sorted. It, no, do you know what? We well, normally you know, just, have a hassle-free I, night, don't we? I just have so much stuff going on in my life all the time anyways that I'm like, dude, I just don't have the time to, to do a live show where i got to be there every week. But, I, you know, more more, uh, more power to you for doing it. Mm. Well, we, we love it, don't we? All of us. We, it's, it's just uh, you look forward to it, um, especially with it being the yeah. later show as well. Um, you, yeah. You'd be surprised the amount of night owls there is uh, who stay up late yeah. to watch it as well. In very yeah. small screens now. <laughs> <coughs> so, Mr. Coyle, what have you got for us in the news? I can play the I news. Have, are we, are we, are we talk, talking of everybody that's here to watch you, should we be saying hello to everybody in chat? Go on, you, you, you do it. So, who have we got? We've obviously got uh, Joe Jerry, we've got No Lead, uh, The Wonderful Vaping with Vic and Twisted Vapor, uh, Village Vapor, have I said her scene? Uh, Vaping Smurf, um, Bill Richards, uh, Vapor Bunny, Jules Mama Vapes, good evening Jules, um, Kevin Smith, Sloan Ranger, um, Robert Laws, Vaping with TC, Alison Warren, Ian Morgan, uh, Matt Chandler, Jay's Vape Reviews, good evening Jay, um, Vapor Trail Channel. I don't know who the hell Vapor Trail, Vapor Trail Channel is. Never come across them before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gam, what's that? Gammy Gin, Gammy Gin, Gammy Gin. Um, Vape Don't Smoke. Uh, Paul, good evening. That's um, it, Paul. Who else have we got? Uh, I think that's about Alan Hodgson, UK Andy. Good evening, UK Andy. Um, Panzer NZ. Um, I think that's it for now, unless anybody else has spotted anybody else that I haven't seen. Uh, good evening to you all, and thank you all for joining us. That made me feel a lot better you've done that. Did it? Yeah. I'm still looking at trying to think, how the hell do I make this, this screen bigger? And uh, Nature Vape. I'm, good I'm, evening, I'm, Nature Vape. Dis my fugger as well, just in. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, Kira Kazar uh, saying they can barely make us out on the screen. So, oh, right. is, uh, did you want me to? I think I'm all sorted now. <laughs> if you're all ready to go, I'm happy to, to, to I, go for it. Let, let's see if he'll um, just switch over if I uh, start streaming.
the pizza episode. I'm just really weird with pizza, man. You know, I don't. I so what I do is I pull the cheese back and I slide the sauce off of it and I put the cheese back down like a nice little blanket, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I can eat it. And everybody made these comments like, "Well, why don't you just uh, why don't you just get no sauce?" I'm like, "Well, then that would just be cheese bread." I like the flavor of the sauce. I just don't want the sauce on there. Yeah, yeah. So. I, have, I have this thing, big thing with cheese as well. I, why, why people put things in cheese, pineapple and stuff like that in cheese? Is, is now, see, me. I'll eat some pineapple pizza. That was that's something you know. Vaping actually has being a picky eater. Vaping has actually changed my eating patterns a little bit because okay, a good example is pineapple. One of the reasons why one of the flavors on my juice line, Sugar Lips is pineapple, the tropical smile, is because I discovered that I actually like pineapple. I thought all my life I hated it. And about three years ago, I tried it because I had vaped it. And I was like, hey, I think I might like pineapple. And I tasted it and was like, holy cow, I love pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. So on pizza, yeah, I'll definitely eat that. <clears throat> yeah, see, I, I like it on pizza, but I just don't. Uh, cheese for me is cheese. You don't put things in cheese. <laughs> Cheese should be cheese on its own. <laughs> I, I absolutely love cheese. I, I can eat cheese forever. I'm a big fan. Mm. Oh, you can't beat a cheese board. I, you know, I'm, I'm a big lad. A lot of people think because you're fat, you, you obviously eat a lot. But I'm not. I'm a bit of a bad eater because of my job. I'm eating after 12 o'clock at night. Right. So, and, and, and I like a good beer as well. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bit of a Mike yeah, Vapes sure. type of guy. And uh, so you come back up. But I'm quite happy to go to a restaurant. And have a, a cheese board or a ploughman's lunch, as we call it, over here with apple and, and, and stuff like that. I love it, cheese. Oh, a bit of cheese. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the cheese myself, yeah. Well, that's something I, I discovered, though, because before I went to the UK, uh, I've been there twice now. Before I went there, oddly, my last name is Britain, yeah. and you know, yeah. I've never been there. Um, but before I went there, people were like, oh, be careful, because the food is very bland in the UK. And I was like, what? well, okay, so let's see what this is all about. The food that I had there was friggin' awesome. Yeah. Okay, it's perfect for me. We um, like seasoning. And, and I had some real fish and chips, which was nice, because the Signature Tips people were, uh, you know, kind of sponsoring the first trip that I went there. And they were like, well, you got to be careful with fish and chips. you got to get the right one. You know, I was like, oh, I didn't know, you know. I mean, as a tourist, you wouldn't know that. But uh, we had some really good fish and chips, and it was, man, I was like, dude, I could eat English food all day. This is perfect for me. Next, so. ne next time you come back to the UK, you need to come to Yorkshire, and you need to go to the Yorkshire coast for fish and chips. That's the best fish and chips you'll yeah. have. No, no. Yeah, it is. So south coast, definitely no, south no, coast. No, no, no. Vape don't smoke, well, said. Well, try some haggis. You don't, you don't want any of them. You want a Lancashire chipper. No. no there's, there's <laughs> it's going to be a chipper. <laughs> oh, so there's a battle about that then. There's no... no roses. <laughs> there's no consensus on which is the best fish and chips. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just Yorkshire. Everybody else disagrees. with <laughs> <laughs> You're inland. It's yeah. calm. Yeah. Darn it. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Grimsby's de definitely inland, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so Bridley said, definitely inland, isn't it? <laughs> Whitby Fish and Chips. Yeah, Bill yeah. Richards. Bill Richards just said it. Whitby Fish and Chips, and and we've got Chris Vampire vaping as well. I've just seen in chat hey, as well. Yeah, Chris. So uh, <laughs> Maple uh, Fork vaping, chips. Uh, vaping with Vic Pft, English chippies gets it in Scotland. Fresh caught. No, no, no. It's it's caught in in England as well. Yeah, it's, we, we the, have uh, fish uh, proper fishmongers and that down here. So. I I have to say I do like Scottish fish and chips. I went I, I worked up there for a while, uh, and the the fish that you get when you go for a fish supper in Scotland, the fish is absolutely massive. It's great. Right. It's really nice. Well, Vic normally comes on with a pie and chips, though. But he does have some mussels with it, I think. Is it mussels he has or whelks, I think? It's one of the two he has with him. Um, Tony, have you got any actual um, people from Britain? You, did, did I watch something? Were you saying that you, you had family over here? Yeah, my family is from there. And the way that it happened is, like, back in the day when people would come to America, they would go to Ellis Island and they would check in. And when they got to Ellis Island and they went through all of their... Uh, you know, their naturalization stuff, they could choose a different name if they wanted to, uh, last name. And so a lot of people choose, you know, chose names like Shoemaker or whatever, whatever their vocation was. And my father's ancestors, when they came here, uh, there were two brothers that came here. Or, yeah, two brothers that came here. When they got here, they got to Ellis Island and said, I'm going to change my last name and we're going to change it to something that reminds us of our heritage. And they changed their last name to Britain. One of them was B-R-I-T-T-A-N. The other was B-R-I-T-T-O-N so that they could be separate but still linked. And yeah. 
and that's that's how it happened. You know, it's funny because when I got to to Birmingham, man, I tell you what, going through uh, uh, the what you call it, going through the um, uh, customs or whatever, it was like the line was taken forever. And some people got up there and it took them forever and all that. But I got up there and I told that story to the guy, and he goes, "Well, you spelled it wrong, mate." <laughs> <laughs> so aside from that, you're all right. Go on. I was like, okay. It took like two minutes up there. I told the story. Yeah. Go on. What, what was the name of that island again what they went to? Because I watched a, a documentary on that, and they had different steps, didn't they? That if yeah. you went down these steps, you was getting sent back, or you were going somewhere different. But if you went down these other right. steps, it meant that you were all right, and you, you were you were going to yeah. have a nice was, life. Yeah, it was called Ellis tested Island. You. And it was Ellis Island, and it's the island where the Statue of Liberty is. Mm. Yeah. So when you first got here, that was where you went, Statue of Liberty. And there was looking out whether whether you had a limp or if you got if there was something wrong with you as well, weren't there? I was watching it. If if you you had to stand up straight and look like you were ready for work, and if right. not, you were out. Right. You know, yeah. which is pretty much how it is today. Who knows? It is, yeah. <laughs> well, then, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget we have got a big, massive giveaway. Now we've sorted out all our technical problems, and I'm sure I'm going to get shouted out for it, but I am so sorry about the beginning of the show. But we've got plenty to give you, people. Plenty, plenty on the Late Late Vape Show. We've got a big, massive giveaway for the Vape Mail. You can win a month subscription of that. Uh, we'll be doing that roughly around about half past 11 time. Um, and we've got loads to talk about with Tony B. But first of all, we're going to touch on a little bit of news, and we go straight over to Mr. Coyley, on our, our anchor man of the news. Mr. Coyley, what have you got for us? <coughs> have we not got the news intro tonight? Slipping. Unfortunately, not. No. Slipping up with that as well. That's it. Get me in a bit more trouble. <laughs> <laughs> right. The first story. I thought this was, <clears throat> excuse me, a good one with having uh, having Tony be on the show. Um, British MPs push for more sensible vaping policies, but US continues to urge bans. Um, and it says, a new report by an influential British government committee says employers should make life easier for vapors by separating e-cigs from existing smoking policies and creating designated indoor vaping areas. However, the European Union refused to reconsider its controversial ban on Swedish snus in a move, is it, is it snus or snus, or, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but anyway, snus. S S N U S. in a move greeted with dismay by harm reduction supporters. Meanwhile, the US CDC continues to push the narrative of a teen vaping epidemic using wildly discredited statistics. Um, so the, the, the sort of main uh, news story, the, the sort of first part of that news story was that the uh, new UK report pushes for a vape, for, sorry, for vape friendly workplaces. Um, a report issued by the UK's Parliament on Tuesday represents a major step forward for harm reduction policy as MPs slam vaping bans for causing false perceptions. The all-party all party parliamentary group, try saying that when you've had a few beers, <coughs> for vaping has put forward five recommendations that, if followed, will encourage smokers to switch to vaping in even larger numbers. Um, and these five points are uh, employers should have a specific workplace vaping policy that balances the need of current vapors or smokers looking to switch vaping with, with those of non-vapors. Second, public, uh, public places should have specific vaping policies that are separate to smoking regulations. Third, the vaping, sorry, the parliamentary state must lead the way and act as an example to other workplaces and public places by becoming vape friendly. The current arrangements do not adequately cater for the needs of vapors. The designated vaping areas are outside and unknown to most members of staff. Uh, fourth, Public Health England should expand its vaping awareness program to correct some of the public misconceptions around vaping and so-called passive vaping. And fifth, vapors should vape in a responsible way. So, um, so you, you've got sorry. two massive differences, haven't you, between the US and the UK? <clears throat> the US are trying to stifle it, um, and obviously the UK are trying to embrace it. That's basically what they're, they're, they're coming up with some good points there, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, and I think the the sort of key thing in there for for us is obviously this this being able to to vape. Not necessarily in workplaces, but adequate provisions made for vapors um, in their in their place of work. I, I have said it. I've said it over the last couple of couple of weeks on on a, a number of shows that I've been on. Um, obviously, you're paying four hundred and odd pound uh, healthcare in America, where over in the UK we we get it, we pay it, but we we get it for free. We don't have to pay it monthly. So, <clears throat> for our government, it'd be nice to cut down all the illnesses that are connected to smoking. Um, obviously, if they start doing that in the uh, in America and people aren't getting ill, they're not going to be paying that much insurance, are they? 
Yeah, exactly. And I think. What do you think, Tony? Yeah, well, you know what? It's really interesting to me because we over here, we like to tout that in the UK, they want to promote vaping instead of smoking, which seems to be the case. But yet, they put all kinds of roadblocks on you guys, and it's really crazy to me. I'm like, okay, well, wait. If you're admitting that it's good for you, uh, or not good for you, but if you're admitting that it's better for you than smoking, then why are, why are you trying to put up roadblocks? That's confusing to me. Well, obviously, that came um, was, obviously, you know we're going through Britexit in a minute. Uh, a lot of that came from the European Union. Um, right. um, you know, like the... the uh, two mil tanks and ten mil bottles, etc. And we took so much from them um, to, to do it. So I'd imagine I, I'm, I'm imagining now with them pushing it, our, things will change a little bit. I think once we're out of um, out of Europe, can fix that up a little bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, obviously, we, there's a lot here happening about the um, plastics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's around the world, isn't it? Ten mil bottles are no good for the plastics. Right. Just constantly putting about you. They're no good. It doesn't work. And a lot of the studies when it first happened um, were studies what were two year old by the time it had come in. So a lot of people were vaping 50 50. Um, in a two mil tank, it's going to last a little bit longer. It won't that big, massive VG. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think. do you think it'll change a little bit, Sam? I, I, I don't know. It's because <clears throat> that isn't there something that says even even if we go ahead with Brexit, which is a big if at the minute, isn't it? They they are putting into question though. They they um, what was it uh, about a f f two three months ago? There was a whole thing with they were going to revisit the size of the bottles and that. So, but I think the thing is what what I was going to say is that it hasn't. I'm sure it was Vic that said and correct me. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, Vic. But it's actually been or, or the EU policy has obviously been put into UK law as as TRPR now. So it's not just a yeah. case of us saying we're going to change it. That then has to go all the way back through Parliament, mm -hmm. doesn't it, to get to get a change to that law. We can't just say right now we're out of the EU. That's it. Finish. We're going to change it. We actually have to sort of revisit all those laws and get them changed again, which is a long, long drawn out process. But the whole thing is, it's it's it's, it's you know it's sort of starting to show signs already of of of, of the being um the word I'm looking for an impetus to actually do something about it. That's which is which is a good thing. So we are actually seeing that you know that people want to do things. So, but saying that the, the plastics thing for me is is. Is a, is a big thing anyway with all these stupid little 10 mil bottles that we've got kicking around. Yeah, you know. and then your nick shot as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you got your little bottle, then you got your nick shot, and then you got all this extra bottles and stuff. It's like, look, man, you know, I mean, and, and really, what's the difference mm. between two mils and six? Mm. <laughs> That's a pretty arbitrary thing to me. I felt so sorry for um, the juice company as well, because when it came up in, when it all came in in the May, a lot of companies spent a hell of a lot of money putting it through um, the TPD, uh, right. making sure that all the flavours were, were, so they could have three in a bottle, you know what I mean, were all done. And then all these companies then came out with the 50 mil short filter. Right. Mm. But it didn't have to go through the TPD. So all these people have spent tons of money, and they all ended up doing the short filter. Right. It was, it, it was a big thing whether they were actually going to allow that anyway, wasn't it? Whether they could actually get away with the short fills or not. That was, that was one mm. thing that, that came in, you know. W were they going to be able to do it? That's been one of the problems with getting my liquid over there is that, you know, that's the other thing is that then for, you know, for the uh, my co-packer here in America, I have two, two partners. It's three partners in the business. And yep. so they're like, okay, so wait, we got to make short fill bottles and then or or – you know, some of the distribu distribution companies over there are like, well, maybe what you could do is just send us a bottle of the flavoring, and we'll mix over here or whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, this is very complicated. And mm. the other thing was that they, a lot of the distros over there were like, well, your juice is in 100 mil bottles, so it makes it difficult for us because we need smaller bottles and this. And that. I'm like, well, it doesn't matter if you're going to short fill it anyways, right? Doesn't mm. matter. It's it seems very complicated over there as far as getting your juice into your your market, and yeah. that's been it's been a challenge for me for sure. Yeah, I was talking to obviously I do the subs with uh, Nick from uh, Daily Vape TV, and obviously he's got Blas, and he's been trying to get it over here. Um, but obviously they, they're going to have to do it the way somebody's going to have to mix it over here and bottle right. it and make sure that it's got the right um, the right stuff on it. Yeah. yeah. Because he says he actually does that in America, he does it in different states, people bottle it for him in different places. 
we do have a couple of different tricky things here like that too. So it's not exclusive to over there, but you know, for the most part, my comp you know, my stuff can just be done in hundred mil bottles and, and it's good to go. You know, I do miss that. I really do miss that. I miss being able to have the big bottles. Yeah. Mm. With just with the nick in it, where you don't have to worry about sticking your nick shot in it and leaving it right. twenty four to forty eight hours and you just get in the mail and you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's you, what you're looking to do. You, you got you got you got the added complication then of, of now because we we've got nick shots. So you have got people right? Do we buy 15 milligram nick shots, 18 milligram nick shots? Do I buy nick shot nick salt nick shots? And yeah, that um, to me seems like it'd be a complicating thing, you know, because then you're like, okay, well, that that was my thing when I was over there. I got a couple of juices that I liked, and I was like, oh, there's no nicotine in these. I've been vaping them, but I'm like, I'm not getting the buzz. Yeah. <laughs> so. So they're like, oh yeah, you got to put these nick shots in there. I was like, okay. So how do I know I got the right amount and all of that? Plus, the nick shot itself isn't that it's it's not pure nicotine, right? It's like in a base, like a VG, yeah, a VG base. So you know, it's just then you got people handling nicotine, which might not be great if they don't know what they're doing. Um, it just seems overly complicated, and just put freaking nicotine in. Yeah. I think a lot of it was well to stop people, you know, like kids getting hold of it. Um, but then you've just got to look at your bleach bottles and stuff like that, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Hey, look, kids are eating Tide Pods and snorting uh, fentanyl patches. I think that they're going to do whatever they're going to do anyways, you know. Well, that, that, that's that, that's the census about obviously over in your country, kids are kids and they're gonna they're gonna try things whether you you can stop them or whether you can't. It, and we all did it as us as kids. So it's uh... smoking cigarettes in fifth grade. You know, as a matter of fact, the way that my channel got started is that okay on the on the west coast here, I grew up in California. You could actually smoke. Yeah, snorting condoms. That was the other thing. Baby. Yes, yeah, snorting condoms. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, I, we could smoke in high school, even though you weren't of age, as long as your parents signed your smoking permit. And uh, so I smoked in school. I smoked in fifth grade. Everybody in my house smoked. My dad is in the military, so mom could go to the commissary and buy cigarettes for like $5 for a carton. So she had a freezer for yeah. me. And, you know, I started smoking. And, you know, uh, mom signed my smoking pass in high school and everything. Well, flash forward, uh, years later, I was living, living in, uh, you know, North Carolina. This is a tobacco state. This is where a lot of the tobacco is grown here. Right, mm. so they don't at the time in 2013 there were no vape shops and they pretty much just were like vape what's that smoke here you know that kind of thing and so my mom came out to visit me I worked in radio that's what made me go from San Diego to Vegas Vegas to Memphis Memphis to here anyways so mom came out to visit me and she brought me a Ego Pen and a VV Nova Mini and I was like, Mom, I've already tried that crap. I tried the blue. They sucked. All those gas station ones, they suck. I'd rather just smoke. It's easier. I can just pull the cigarette out, and I'm good to go. And she was like, well, just try this. And it was uh, Villain Vapors. It was Bonnie and Clyde, which is a berry mix. And turns out, within two weeks of her bringing that to me, I was off cigarettes. So naturally, the first thing you do is you go to... YouTube and you start looking at videos. Well, I found P. Bissardo with a video on the VV Nova Mini. It's a 45 minute video. I was like, dude, 45 minutes for something that could have been five minutes. I love you, Phil, but geez. Yep. I've told him that story too. He's like, really? So I was your inspiration because my videos are too long? Anyways, and then the rest of the videos were like, you know, this motherfucker right here and all this stuff. And I was like, dude, okay. My mother is very conservative. If she were looking at those videos, she would think, oh, this is some kind of stoner alternative stuff. I'm not doing it. And so I was like, okay, well, i tell you what. I have a radio background. I own a video production company. I have all the equipment. Why don't I start a channel? I'll make my videos as short as possible, and I will not curse. You know, I curse like a sailor in real life, but, you know, <laughs> I figured let's try to keep it clean, something that my mother can watch. And it... It, it worked out. It you know it it grew and turned into what it is today. Um, I think that it's good for us to have different examples of who people are, in you know in the vaping community because you know we're all different and it's good to have um, something that people can look at and go yeah I can associate with that. Yeah. You know I think I could try this vaping thing because that's really what it comes down to for me is I want to let people know that there's something other 
than cigarettes that you can get your nicotine from. And that's really how it all went for me. Mm. I, I, I was uh, obviously the pod systems have took over massively, haven't they? Um, and I think the, the, there's not saying took over, but there's a lot of them out there. Yes. Um, and I think that it is very simple because obviously I, I'm in a Yorkshire. I'm a Yorkshire lad. You got working men's clubs and stuff like that, and, and the age groups are roughly over 40 year old that uh, are wanting to stop now. Um, and, and a lot of them frowned upon vaping and all that. They don't know what it's in it and all that stuff. I do yeah. think the, um, the the pod systems nowadays are good enough, mouth to lung, to get them. And especially after with Nick Salts coming in, um, obviously we can only have 20 milligram, but it's going to give them that hit. And that's yeah. what a lot yeah. of them have been missing. You know the old cigar lights that you used to get, and you'd, you'd not get that much yeah. vapor from it. And the batteries had run out, where you can get a few of these that are really cheap and just buy a couple of them, keep charging right. them. Um, I think they're a good good stepping stone. You've got those yeah, disposable was... ones now as well, haven't you? So that makes things even better for them. I have a love hate relationship with the disposable ones. The Stig, I freaking love that thing, mm. but I hate it mm -hmm. because. And I even told them, I said, I can't put this on the channel, and I'll tell you why because. I can't, you know, if I do that, then people are going to go, oh, great, so now you're advocating that people throw away a lithium-ion battery. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, see, now, I, I even have a kind, I was looking around here, I usually have one around somewhere because they sent me a box of them. And, yeah. you know, they're small, they're super tiny, and I love that. What I told them is I said, I'll tell you what, if you guys institute a, um, a recy uh, recycling program, where people can either go into the shops, drop them into a box, and the, comp the the shop will give you a free one for every four or five that you drop off, or make it so that people can mail them back to you, go to your website, print out a shipping label, and put it on there, and send it back to you, and then you send them back a free one for every five that they send or something, like they did then the I'll Coca -Cola. support you, and I'll put them on the channel. Like they used to do with the old Coca-Cola bottles. Sure, yeah. <laughs> So I, 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 I reviewed uh, one from your over the over the pond, which was the White Cloud, um, which I really liked. That again, that was a disposable one. So that, that was the other thing. Just then, when when you were saying Tony about the, the 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 other thing with moving from smoking to vaping is the convenience thing, isn't it? Because it yeah, is. Really. It, it's it's a pain in the ass when when you first start vaping. That I've got to take. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I started with a bottom fill. I can't remember what it was, but that's what I started with. And you had to pull it apart. Take the tank off, off, take the bottom yeah, off. Yeah, put your liquid in. And I think that's something that puts a lot of people off. And I think that's where pods have it now, don't they? It's, it's, it is more convenient. You still don't fill it, but it's a lot more convenient. You can be up and going in minutes, can't you, rather than having to mess about and learn out how to do it and how to change that's, your coil and prime your coil and everything else. That has been the biggest problem I have with converting people. I've converted a lot of people, but I have a couple of friends that just, I cannot do it. They converted for about, what, man, maybe like three months? Mm -hmm. I was like, man, you guys are doing great. I'm really proud of you. And if you know me, if you're a friend of mine, well, you really pretty much don't pay for anything. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, here, take these, take these, take these, <laughs> here's some juice. You know, that kind of thing. So, I, you know, they had it made, and they went back to cigarettes. And when I asked them why, they said, well... One of the one of them said that they they got a cough from it, and I said, okay, but is that just because the way you're doing it, like you didn't learn how to vape it, because it is different than cigarettes. Um, you know, I like to tell people that something like this is like hitting a water pipe, right? It's a direct hit to the lungs. You're gonna just <sighs> if you're gonna be using a little stick or something that's a tighter draw, then it's more like a cigarette. That usually works, but. He was like, nah, I got I'm developing a cough. And I'm like, so you think the cigarettes are going to do better for you? Mm. you know? And then the other person said, well, my problem is it's so much easier to pull a cigarette out of the pack, light it, smoke it, and then toss it. Which, mm. by the way, I hate to see that now. When I see some yeah. smokers get out of their car and they're like, flick. Yeah. I'm like, dude, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's really but, easier when your lighter might not work because there's too much wind or it's raining and you're trying to. Right. We don't have to worry about that with vaping, do we? So. It's just like uh, Kerika was saying, though, a lot of that is it's your lungs, that cough that you're getting, is that your lungs are clearing, aren't they? Right. Somebody was saying it's to, like the little... Is that as well as the uh, cells in the back of your yeah. lungs? They grow like, they like little airs. And what happens is when you're smoking, it kills them airs off. But they're constantly growing, constantly growing. So when you start vaping, there's no tar there covering them, so they start growing. And it, the actual vapor irritates them, which is what gives you the cough. And that's all it is. And once you get through three weeks 
and you're normally fine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's no different to when you start smoking, is it? You cough when you start smoking. Oh, you just yeah. give it that bit of time. And I remember when I started smoking, I would have to drink, like, you know, Coke or Mountain Dew or something every time I'd take a hit because it was so gnarly. I was like, ah. You know, just I'd have to cover the taste with it. So, you know, uh, there's been a, you know, I, I'll admit, there's been a couple of times I was on a, uh, a vacation in Dominican Republic. I was at the pool bar. I didn't bring a vape into the pool bar with me because I was like, I don't, I don't have a waterproof vape. Uh, and my friend was smoking. I was like, let me see that. I took the first puff and I went, eh. And I took the second puff and was like, no. <laughs> That's so gnarly, dude. Yeah. Gave yeah. it back to him. And, you know, uh, and then once at a Judas Priest concert, I'm a big metal head, and I was at a Judas Priest concert, and I was like, let me have one of those. I smoked about a third of it and was like, okay, now I know why I don't smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's nasty. That's why I think when people say that kids are going to go from vaping to smoking, I'm like, nah, I think no. you got it wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because this tastes like cereal. That tastes like buttholes. Mm -hmm. Okay? I don't think I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't miss that thing as well coming out from a night out, you know, and you've all been smoking. And that smell yeah. on your clothes and your yeah, hair. And... It, yeah. Yeah, it's gnarly. So I, I don't I don't buy that at all. But what I do buy is that if you make it harder for kids to get what they're trying to get, they'll get whatever they can. Mm. So if yeah. they can't get their vapes, they're going to get cigarettes. Get cigarettes, yeah. You know? Yeah, they are. And obviously, uh, Vic made a really good point about it. You know, certain people who can't get into... They, they go to these places to get the juice. You know, like the, the petrol stations and stuff like that can't get out any further than that actual place to get them in the store and whatever, so they can't get the juice anywhere else. Right. Uh, they're not great on the internet. It sort of cuts them down, doesn't it? Mm. Well, the FDA has here just said that they're going to, they're, they're going to pull all the flavors <coughs> out of the convenience stores. They call them C-stores. So uh, petrol stations, um, you know, whatever the convenience store is, uh, grocery stores will not be allowed to carry flavors anymore. And I'm like, okay, but you're going to have tobacco and menthol. Well, first of all, those both taste like crap to me. Uh, second of all, menthol is a flavor. So <laughs> you yeah. don't know. You know what, do you, what are you getting at here? Yeah. But yeah. if you make it harder for us adults, so the problem is you're not just making it harder for the kids, you're making it harder for the adults to get a hold of that stuff too. And if I can't just go get what I need, well, I'm going to get what's the next thing there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, it's, I don't know. It's, it's a, it seems like a pretty losing proposition when it comes to our government. They just don't want to you know. do mm. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are versed in what our government situation is, but if you Google the Master Settlement Agreement, MSA, um, what basically that is is our government was going to sue the big tobacco companies, right? They went to sue the big tobacco companies. They were going to put them out of business for killing Americans. Well, the big tobacco companies came back to them and said, hey, let's be reasonable. I'll tell you what. We'll give you 60% of our profits going forward for, for life. Yeah. Yeah. And the government, technically then the U.S. government owns tobacco. They're the, the highest stake owner in tobacco. So if you're getting 60% of the profits, well, that's pretty good. Well, then what they did is they split up the money, put the money into the states. Uh, there was, you know, states that had a higher numbers of smokers or of age people got more money. That money was supposed to be for education and health care. Well, what happens, uh, yes, the MSA. Uh, so what happens then is that the, um, all right, so then the states, they get advice from their financial advisors that tell them, well, profits are only going up for tobacco at that time. It was around 2002, I think it was. Profits are only going up, so why don't we go ahead and sell bonds based on our projected profits? So what happens? Education starts working. Vaping comes into play. And then the states are like, well, crap, why are we getting all the money we used to get from tobacco? Tobacco goes, well, guys, it's this vaping thing. It's kind of hurting you. And the states go, well, we need that money because they didn't use it all for education and health care. They used it for salaries and everything else. So now these states can't pay back their loans. they got to do something. So yeah. just make this a tobacco product, go after it, and it's uh, it's it's pretty ugly. It's, it's, it, technically, our government owns tobacco. 
some of the states have spent years and years ahead, though, haven't they, on that? Yeah. yeah. On the promise yeah. of that money that they're not actually getting. Now they're not getting it. They're like, oh, crap, what do we do? Mm. So, I mean, I, I understand your plight, but that's your plight, and you should have gone on the premise that, no, we want to reduce cigarette sales, so let's not take loans based on what we think we're going to make. So, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big problem. And obviously the big reason, you can see obviously where the reason of why people are jumping on it to stop it. I think there's a lot of backhanders going under there as well. Oh, yeah. There's definitely some. Uh, have you got anything else you want to touch on the news? Um, just, uh, we'll, we'll do this one very quickly because I know, uh, I know Salford wants to talk about Article 13 dating. So, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll quickly go through this, and I think this has probably been discussed on previous shows, so we'll, we'll see how much um, uh, interest there is in it, but uh, it's, it's the one around the, the council tenants, um, calls for council tenants to be banned from smoking at home, uh, as figures show they are three times more likely to do so than house owners. Um, council house tenants are three times more likely to smoke than homeowners. Uh, a report from two parliamentary committees recommended helping smokers. Uh, council tenants are less likely to seek help than those in private rented houses, uh, and researchers said providing e-cigarettes to smokers, sorry, free e-cigarette kits to help smokers uh, quit. Um, it says residents in council housing are three times more likely to smoke than owner occupiers should be given access to vaping kits to help them quit. A new report has claimed. Uh, researchers found that 35% of residents in social housing smoked compared with only 25% in private rented accommodation and just 11% of homeowners. Uh, the report published between Action Smoking Health and two all-party parliamentary groups uh, urges, urge, urges, taction, urges action to tackle the number of people continuing to smoke at home. Um, according to authors, the uh, aim is to help protect children and non-smokers from, from secondhand smoke. Uh, researchers found that people living in social housing are twice as likely to smoke as other people and also find it more difficult to quit. So that, I, I don't know how the US works, Tony, but we, we have, uh, how, how do you best describe it? So we have, we have councils that, that provide properties for um, people. Or reduce rent. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, so it's, it's sort of cheaper cheaper housing. Um, right. And basically what they're saying is that these, these councils are, are not wanting to allow or, or looking to stop those tenants from from um, smoking and vaping in their in their properties. So again, well, they've, already, they've already done that here, like because they basically just said this is the same thing as tobacco. So if they're you know once they said that, then it fell under the same rules for being able to smoke in the workplace. Funny thing is, marijuana considered to be a uh, a medicinal. So you can smoke that at work. Although most people aren't smoking it anymore. They're using, like, you know, the little cartomizers and things like yeah. that, so you really wouldn't even know. But so you can actually smoke marijuana at work? They, well, technically you can, right? Some workplaces would be like, no, and they still drug test for it. But if you're in a legal state, especially one of the ones that's been legal for a while, kind of hard to, to stop it. It's medicine. It's, it's something that these people need. So... Um, but yeah, I, yeah it, it's been that way for a long time. But here's my thing on that, okay? I don't want to vape in a business or at work where smoking is not allowed just because I don't want to, you know, uh, I don't want this to be like smoking. So I'll, I'll go outside. I'm fine with that. Hmm. Or I might have something like this and just take a little, you know. Steve Dillingoff, I've, I've been in a few states smoking weed. <laughs> I think this is this is this is the thing, isn't it? It's 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 another one of these things that's we, we talked about it last week on the show about actual council employees being told they couldn't vape anymore, and and it's it's it, it, as you say it's it's bringing all vaping into smoking and making it all one thing. That's the really thing that really mm -hmm. really grinds my gears. It really yeah. Does. Well, that's what yeah. they want, you know. Well, we social housing. They're going to have to they don't going to have to change the contracts, aren't they, with the tenancy policies for it. To happen for our tenants that are actually in. Like we touched on last week, it happens on, in this building, so I'm in a block. Uh, it happens in this building where new tenants are not allowed to smoke in the flats. Mm. They have to go down the bottom. So all them tenancy agreements, the old ones, they'd have to change if they wanted to ban it completely, vaping and smoking. That's interesting. I, I just don't think they should, should like we were saying, it's, it's Taurus, the, the vapors with the smokers. Mm. Um, 
I, I, we were saying it the other week. If you, if you look here, obviously, I, 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 it's my front room, but I call it my studio. Uh, if I'd have been smoking in here, the ceiling would be all yellow, and, and right. you know, you used to. It's not. You don't get any of that. I used to. Uh, I, at one point in my life, I was a uh, mini blind installer. So I would, you know, go out with the truck in the morning, take out the blinds and stuff. Dude, so one of the things that really grossed me out about cigarettes is when you take down somebody's old, you know, sconce or whatever their Venetian uh, Yeah, when you take down all their old window coverings, sometimes I'd take the screws out and it would stay there. Because, <laughs> yeah, because the tar had built up and just stuck it there. I was like, that is disgusting. Yeah. You know. So I've seen I've seen the yellow marks down and where it's actually right. dripped. Yeah. You know, in offices and places where where they used to be able to smoke, the the horrible yellowness. Pubs used to be the worst, didn't they? Because they, they never had a white ceiling, did they? You no. Know, <laughs> when it was dirty yellow all the way across. Right. But pubs actually it actually built up as well. Pubs actually paint the ceilings that colour now, don't they, to make themselves look authentic? You know, paint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember when uh, work when I first started working in the supermarkets uh, just before the uh, smoking ban, you'd see um, from where the smokes area was, and it would just get gradually whiter as it went away from the uh, the old uh, smoking areas. <laughs> so, do you guys ever get a hard time when you uh, go out with the smokers? Like, say you're at a restaurant and everybody's outside smoking, and you go out there to vape. Do they? Sometimes here, I get this like vape shaming thing, like yeah. where uh, the smokers are shaming you. They're like, "Oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. mine smells <laughs> like friggin' cereal and marshmallows." Yeah. And you're giving me that? Yeah. Okay, whatever, dude. You see, if, if I go to the workman's club, I take a little tiny small device, something like a mouth to lung, um, so it's no big clouds or all like that, and I always right. blow it down to the floor. Hmm. Um, I, I, there's never no big clouds or like that, but I, I've had a few of them that go, hey, oh, it stinks that. And I said, hold on a minute, you've just been outside and had a cigarette. What do you think you smell like? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that stink off of them, it's absolutely disgusting. Well, we touched on that, just one more thing we're going to touch on, then we're going to get on about Tony's, um, the new pulse on the, the, the V2. Um, yeah. what, what we're talking about with the section uh, 13, we'll take it home to solve it. Article 13. Well, that's yeah. 13. It's a new copyright law that's coming into effect in Europe. But what that means for us is that we might be locked into Europe. Our videos might be locked into Europe. We might not even be able to upload videos to YouTube. And it's taken away our internet freedom, basically. Um, so what, what we need to do, we need to rally around and get onto our MEPs and, and actually tell them, you know, in its present form, it's not going to work for us. I've actually already been on and done it. I, I, all eight from my area have, have had a, a message from me. And it's easy to go on, just go on, give a message saying, in its present form, we're going to lose all our social media going out from within Europe. Um, so the likes of, we might not even be able to see videos coming in. So the likes of uh, Sony's videos may not come into Europe anymore if mm. this goes wow. ahead. Uh, that I was not aware of. That's wow. Yeah, it, it's all to do with protecting people's copyright, but within it, it makes it very difficult uh, for YouTube because it makes them liable for any copyright uh, problems. They have to pay for it. Um, so YouTube are actually saying that you might be closed down into Europe alone and your videos only go out to there, or we may not allow you at all mm. to upload to YouTube. Your videos won't go out to the rest of the world. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. We, it's taking away a bit of our internet freedom, uh, and we, we all need it. it yeah. affects everybody, not not just not just vapors, not just our channels. It affects everybody that uses the internet. You know, we, we all go out searching for educational stuff, or uh, even just for entertainment, and that might be just. Uh, never mind. I seen that cheeky smile, and you thought, "Porn right away." It is, no, yeah, it's no, no, no. Ken, Ken's, <laughs> Ken's just we can that. virtual Ken's. porn, VPNs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can get down to the VPN thing. But the, the, the point is, we shouldn't let Europe be doing this to us anyway. You've got to be careful yeah. with VPNs as well, because um, Netflix actually worked a way around to stop VPNs to be able to access other uh, other countries' contents. Yeah. So it's not necessarily always going to be a viable thing. If um, YouTube put the same thing in place, we're still going to have the same issue. Yeah, well, it's, it's YouTube, it's Google, it's Instagram, it's Twitter, it's everybody. It affects everybody, this this law, this copyright law. 
and we, we need to, to get some changes done to it. So we'll get on to your MEPs. You know, go and have a look, go and look it up for a start. Article 13 and, and the effects for it. There is uh, videos from YouTube on YouTube about it as well. You can go and have a look at. Now, just to my last thing, I'll just go off that. To my last thing, uh, we're at the end of November, and of course, November was Movember, and it was uh, Male Cancer Awareness Month. So, guys, because most of us are guys that are in there, uh, make sure you're all right. Check yourself. If you find anything wrong, go out, get it checked quick. Same as I did, and I was lucky. I, I managed to survive it. Yeah. So that's just that's it from me. Yeah, so, uh, to be honest, with you, I check myself quite often. <laughs> really quickly, just so I understand this Article 13 thing. So they're saying that because of possible copyright violations, yeah. or because it's made. Yeah. yeah, because now we, what they've done is instead of putting the onus on the person who created the video, they're actually uh -huh. putting it onto. Uh, YouTube, they put it onto Google, they put it onto Twitter. It becomes their liability, and they have to pay for that copyright. Yeah. So if you imagine it, how much, how many videos go up at, per minute on YouTube has to be yeah. checked, and then has to be checked for copyright. Yeah, but YouTube is really videos. good about that. Like I've uploaded something before where I included just a tiny little piece of a. A movie quote or a song in there, and they were like, "Oh, this is copyright. You don't have to do anything about it, but you won't get any money from it." Well, I don't get any money from YouTube, anyways. Yeah. These days, I mean, it's pretty crappy as it is, so yeah. I didn't really bother with it. But uh, they're pretty quick. I mean, as soon as your video is done and uploaded, and it's been up for like three minutes, you'll get. They'll tell you right away. What What they're saying is, you have to prove that you own everything in your video. Mm. Okay. You have to prove it, and if there's any infringement or somebody says, "Hold on, mate, that's that belongs to me," they actually have to pay rather than them come after the creator. Mm. And if you imagine the the amount of videos going up, YouTube, it's not going to be possible for them to do it. Well, they, I don't know. There's got to be a way around that, but I, you know, I don't know. That sounds. Like... It's said you've just done a big massive run around people who've done. Um, Clones or whatever the lookalike ones have done a big pull down on that, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've done a big pull down on that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has just gone past um, 11 o'clock. Um, just to tell you that we'll be doing the big giveaway, um, which is for um, a month's subscription to Vape Mail. Um, I, I review it every week, uh, every month, so make sure you go and check that out. Um, we are going to do that roughly about opposite 11, but we have got our special guest on for a reason. Not only because he's a good looking bloke and a nice bloke at that, um, got that. we've got him on to, <laughs> to talk about the new Pulse and the new Pulse version 2 RDA. Yeah. Which yeah, so I'm loving that, you know. Do you know the bit I love about that? What's that? Obviously, you've got the, that Altum where you can change, where you can have right. it as a single coil, um, which is PEI, isn't it? Yes, PEI. See, yeah. the, the, here's the thing. For anybody that's wondering what the difference between PEI and Ultim is, Ultim is a brand. So that's a company, that's mm -hmm. a copyrighted brand name. So unless you're actually buying the material from Ultim, then you can't call it Ultim, technically. Hmm. Um, China usually doesn't care, but, you know, yeah. uh, I do. And so I was like, if it's not Ultim, we can't really call it Ultim. So, but yeah, that was one of the things... One of the things that people complained about with the first one was that, you know, the holes on that first Pulse, this is basically a V2 of the Pulse 24, that, you know, some people are a little bit ADD, and I get that, that you couldn't line up the holes exactly perfectly every time. It, well, one of the reasons for that is because we had tubes, and the tubes are angled, so they're technically yeah. ovals. They're not really exactly round, right? And the holes on the uh, on the uh, cap were round, so if you try to, and you, there's really no way around it. On a stainless steel one, no problem. But if you had a black matte one, then you might see a tiny little bit of the metal peeking out from the piece, the barrel piece that's underneath it. So that one of the things I wanted to do is solve that problem, and I also wanted to separate the cap from the barrel. So. What we did with this Ultim or PEI piece that's on here is that actually keeps this completely separate from the metal that's down here. So it's going to keep this cool. So even if you're vaping at 150 watts, dual coil, you should be fine. Then this little ring pops right off of here. All right? This is, of course, the single coil one, and it just pops right in there like that. 
And then, of course, we have two other pieces that are in there. One that is also honeycomb, because this is honeycomb. I'm here. Uh, one that is a dual coil that's honeycomb. So you can see the single yep. coil puts yep. it right on top of the coil. The dual coil puts it right on the sides of the coil. And then there's also a dual coil that's just wide open. At first, I thought I liked the honeycomb one the best for the dual coil. Turns out, I actually like the wide open one. Man, you put that thing wide open, I turn it just a little bit to adjust that airflow, to close it a little bit, and it's perfect. Uh, one of the other things was with the with the deck on that one. Deck is great. I love the Pulse 24. I have like eight of those in rotation now, um, still to this day. So the um, so what, what, wait, oh, so the deck, being a postless deck, we just had those two little places to put your wicks, right? Mm. Not really much of a well. If you're squawking, it doesn't matter as much, right? Because you can just keep squawking juice up there, no problem. But people said they wanted to have more well, so we went ahead and hollowed it out underneath there, lifted up the, uh, yeah, lifted up the, the deck, and then I was like, okay, well, at this point, why don't we tilt those terminals up a little bit because one thing that I learned with the design of the Pulse X is that because those were at an angle I could get more torque on it, you know, more torsion on it. Because uh, if you're trying to build on a mod, which a lot of people do, I don't necessarily recommend that, but as you're pushing in, you're pushing them out over. But if you're pushing down, it's a lot easier. So I said let's go ahead and tilt those up and then we took the top squawk bottom draw from the Pulse X and incorporate that into the Pulse V2. They were both in development at the same time. I said, hold on to the V2 for the Pulse Dual Mod, and we'll put the Pulse X with the kit for the Pulse 80, which became another kit. We'll address that in a second. But um, So yeah, so we, we lifted it all up. It squonks from the deck, and it will go down the little ramps on the side, fill up the well, and then it will suck back down underneath the deck, which it works really good. And if you saw my video, you can squonk the hell out of that thing, man, before it. No squonk tank your RDA is completely leak-free. But with this one, man, you can squonk the hell out of it before it ever gets up there and out those airflows. Um, so, yeah, so that was that was the thought behind the Pulse V2. Uh, I wanted to continue with the, with the Pulse 24. A lot of people ask me, why didn't you do a 22-millimeter version of that? I said, well, because we eliminated the need for that with those airflow rings. Mm -hmm. So you can either make it a very reduced chamber with airflow hitting right on the coil or throw the dual coil with it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I do want to address this. I watched your video, you recommended obviously not to, um, and obviously when you're pulsing your coils to make sure you don't put the, the PAI on. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely don't want to do that. Like, you, I don't see why you would because typically when you're pulsing your coils you just have your deck and you won't have on your bottom. So, yeah. yeah. So, but you know, if you're if you're gonna go to that next step, there's no reason to put the barrel and that PEI on there, your airflow ring. But if you do, well, what you might happen? What was this fresh metal instead of painted? Yeah, I, I agree with that. But what when you do, you might melt it, and because no plastic material is going to be completely uh, heat resistant to a glowing coil. <laughs> if your coil is red hot, hmm. yeah, you're gonna melt it. So that's that's what's going to happen. So yeah, um, I, I I really like that <clears throat> when I was watching your video the, the the squonking because where it comes out you've obviously got the two little ramps where it runs down to the bottom. Right. And I'm assuming it's going to sort of run down the sides down to your actual wicks as well at the ends of the yeah, wicks. Yeah, it does. There's some as well as soaking the coil as well. It's just yeah, there are indentions on the side where the wicks go, hmm. so it's going to roll into that as well. It, it works really well. One thing I do want to address with the Pulse X, it's funny because, listen, man, I get it. When you are doing something that's successful, people want to knock you down. And when I put the Pulse X out, the, the real story behind that is when the Pulse X is like the kit was for the first BF mod, right? The, the mm -hmm. mech mod. We put that out. A few months later, we put it out with the R RDA and gave you different panel choices, right? So that was the same game plan with this. But when we first made the Pulse, that Pulse BF and the 80 watt, we were going off the fact that the popular battery was going to be the 2700. The 21700, at the time of developing those, a year and a half, two years ago, mm. the only 21700s that I could get my hand on were, they were from iJoy. And they were crap. I was like, these are not even very good. So 
Yeah, we had already made the mold, and the molds cost about $25,000 to make for those things, even in China. So we'd already made the mold, and I was like, ah, I think we'll be fine. Now, when the Pulse X came out, I said, look, guys, this is partly me and a little bit of my own uh, pride, but I wanted to make sure that the legacy of the Pulse regulated mod was not that it's a great, it's a good mod that would have been great if it took the 21700. Mm -hmm. So I said, guys, I don't care if it costs more, if I have to take less for my cut of it, which, by the way, is less than a dollar. Uh, so I don't care if I have to take less. What I want you to do is make a new mold and make that kit be 21700 for the legacy of the mod, man. Yeah, you know, because we're not going to make another version of that mod. It's right. done after that. And so I was like, "Please do it." And they even told me they said people are going to be pissed off, man. They're going to be like, "Oh man!" So this was out for a few months. And now you got one that takes twenty one seven hundred. I said, "Yeah, that's why we need to make the firmware for the eighty be updated to exactly the same as the Pulse X. The only difference is the panels and the twenty one seven hundred back." So. I, you know, of course, you got this is a cash grab. I'm like, well, business is a cash grab. Yeah, that's how business works. You want to make money with your business. Um, but you know, the bottom line was, I was like, I want the 21700 in there for the legacy of the mod. Yeah. So if anything, I was maybe a little bit prideful, you know. But yeah. trust me, it didn't sell so much more than the other that I became rich. So it's not not just about the cash. But hey, I want to make money. You know, yeah, hold it. I put a lot of time into that. Uh, and then the dual 18650, when we were working on this one, we had three other shapes that we were working on. And by the way, when, you know, the whole chip debacle that came about, yeah. Yeah. that's the one I was talking about in that video where I said we were already working on the Vandy chip. It was in another mod that we're working on, and it's rectangular, right, just like that. So that was the retro. Yeah, so that was the chip that we were talking about. The three shapes that we were working on, I actually sat down with J-Bo at, uh, at the expo in February in California and did an interview with him. After that, I was like, do you have a, a few minutes to talk about design stuff? He's like, I'd love to. And we actually talked about doing a project with Wismec, myself, J-Bo, and Wismec, and that just never happened because he left Wismec. But at that time, he goes, look, these other two designs, they're pretty good as far as the shape goes, but you're going to need more development time and more prototypes to get that done. People want that dual 18650 now. I was like, yeah, and he goes, why don't you just use the rouleau shape? And I go, well, you know, I just I don't want to use the same shape that's already been out there, and it's your shape. You came up with it. And he goes, dude, you have my blessing. If you want to do that shape, run with it. And I was like, okay. So I went back to Vanny Vape, told them that, and they were like, well, let's, let's see what we can come up with that. So first prototype looked like this. Little plastic jobby here. That's yep. just you know, that's what this stuff looks like when I first get them. And I was like, yeah, I like that. Got the switch up here in the front. Got the screen back here. Triggers. I like that. And that is what we came up with for the end result. And I think it's pretty great. It is really nice. <clears throat> you know, I've had some people on social media go, oh yeah, man, I, I would buy that if it didn't have the fire button there. I'm like, hold one first and then make your judgment. Because even if you think that you want to fire back here, trust me, with squonking, there's your squonk hole, there's your fire, yep. it works perfect. That's how you want to do it. So, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, and that's not to say that the other shapes that I had been working on will not see the light of day. Another thing that, uh, that people have been asking for with the original Pulse, people love the fact that they can change out these doors, there are guys that are doing 3D printed doors that are like a perfect fit for this, and you can put anything you want on them. Uh, it's yep. created a whole other industry of other people that are able to make these things for them. And I totally supported them. Every one of them, I was like, dude, even though Vandy Vape was like, whoa, shouldn't we stop them? I said, why? <laughs> they said, because they're making products for our product, and they're, they're making money from it. I go, dude, in America and probably the U.K. or just about anywhere other than China, people would see that as a good thing. That is respect. That means that yeah. they love and respect your product enough to make something for it. And it also makes your product more appetizing mm -hmm. because there are a lot of options for it. And they were like, yeah, if you, personal, you can make it personalized, can't you? Yeah. So one of the things that we've been working on, 
quite potentially, and I haven't really talked about this much, is in the uh, new year we might see something like this that is not a Squonk mod. Mm -hmm. That right. has interchangeable panels, same ABS body, all that kind of stuff, and possibly G10 doors and all that kind of stuff. It's it's possible. It might even be mm -hmm. waterproof. Mm -hmm. So I really, I re really like that the, the, the bit that you said. And again, I watched on your video the um, where you talked about the bottle and the bottle actually sitting on the bottom. So a lot of those similar shape mods, you actually take the the door off at the bottom to get the batteries out, and oh sorry, to get your bottle out to change it, and your batteries fall out, you know, straight away. And yeah. I think mm. that's just yep, kept it all separated. That was one of my things. I was like, okay, if we're gonna do that that shape, then let's do that shape right. And that's why mm. I moved the, the fire button to the front. We made the batteries so that they're completely separated yeah. from the bottle, yeah. which serves a couple of purposes. One, that you know, if your juice does leak somehow, which is entirely likely, uh, that it should be at least separated enough from the batteries that you're going to catch it before it gets to them, right? Yeah. yeah. And the other thing was that, you know, I was like, I don't want to, if I have to change my batteries or if I want to change the bottle, I don't want to have to do both at the same time. Exactly. But, you know, if you get a refill bottle, this is perfectly fine. And, I, you know, I, I love the top side. I think it's a great mod. I think the innovation on that, that was really, really smart. Brian's a great guy. But it doesn't negate every other mod that's out there because I can take this off, screw a refill bottle on there, fill it in the same about the same time, maybe a little bit longer than the top side. So, yeah, it's because I have people that don't think, I guess, the same way. On social media, go well. I don't even know why you put that mod out. It's it's pretty much uh, a non-starter because it doesn't have top fill. I'm like, that's not okay. You know what? We've been developing this for a long time. It's it's going. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to bring the top side into it. If if, if you think, I was talking to Rand. I did a bit of a, an interview with him when I was at uh, Expo. Um, obviously, he's got um, it's going to be a dual 21700 into this. Yeah, I'd like to see, but I don't know if it's going to be 21700 because, you know, even though Brian and I are friends and we talk, he won't tell me. So, right. <laughs> you know. It was, it, it was there at the, um, I didn't actually hold it. Paul McCartney held it. Um, so oh, okay. I it, but I didn't know which what, what batches it was. <sighs> what yeah, sorry, my dog's over here crying. See, <laughs> hey, look. There you go, buddy. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's loop the peekaboo. <laughs> he has his own Instagram, by the way, at Luke the Peekapoo. Go follow him. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Peekapoo? A uh, Peekapoo is a mix between a Pekingese and a Poodle. Uh -huh. So it has the Poodle hair and a little bit of the snout, but the rest of it, he's got the curly tail that Pekingese does, same kind of size and body. He's a good little guy. Okay, okay, go ahead. Though, but it's not a dog, I'm telling you, it's when you've not quite made it. <laughs> <laughs> so, like you said, there's, there's going to be something new as well. Um, you might be looking at something a little bit different without the swamp, then maybe after Christmas. It's the possible. And I've also been talking with a company about a collaboration on a device that, um, kind of a pod-type device, that the uh, this company has had other versions, like this would be like a... V2 of one of their versions of something, and this is a pod system that can you it uses replaceable coils, refillable pods. You can either use salts or standard liquids, which that's what I want. Mm. And it's very small and has a good size battery. It also has some child protection on it, so like you, the kids can't just get that thing out of it. Yeah. That easy. So. Um, and the pod would be actually inside of the mod. It's more of an all-in-one. So we'll see if that actually happens. But yeah, but you've obviously got your, your juice line as well, which is Sugar Lips. Um, I know we've touched a little bit earlier on about it. Um, how, how likely is it going to be coming over to the UK? Well, I'm looking for a distributor. Um, you know, Ohm's Distro, uh, Andy is a friend of mine. And we've been talking about it, so I don't know. Uh, for a while, Signature Tips was distributing it, but they said just for, for them, juice was too difficult to, you know, that field of juice was too much for them uh, because it's just, it's dog-eat-dog -dog over there. It's very mm. difficult. Yeah. And, I mean, have you, you know. checked with, um, well, I mean, Grimm's got his juice going through Flawless Distro. Have you checked with them? 
That's a possibility. Yeah, I'd like to get it over there again because people want it. And, you know, we've got three flavors. Play the profiles. We've got three flavors. There's, you know, everything with me, I like to have something to do with me, right? So the, um, like, uh, we'll go with Dirty Grin. Dirty Grin, I love my cereal vapes, but I didn't want to just make something that everybody else was making. So I made basically uh, Cheerios, so it's like a... Uh, Odie, Odie cereal with marshmallows, milk, and berries. That one's very good. Tropical Smile, again, you know, uh, a middle-aged guy that eats like a three-year-old. Didn't think <laughs> I liked, I didn't think that I liked, uh, you know, pineapple at all, and I vaped it a couple times and went, I think I might like it. Mm -hmm. I tried it, loved it, and, you know, so I was like, need to make a pineapple flavor. And then pineapple. the... Pineapple's an odd one because it can be very chemically, can't it? If you don't get it right, it tastes it's chemically. Tough. It's a bit like a grape. It's tough. Yeah, grapes are the yeah. same way. Uh, that one took me a while to get that one, but I did. I think what helped me is I stopped trying to add other things into it. You know what I mean? Just like if it was pineapple and cream or pineapple and apple, that's what was messing me up. When I just focused on pineapple, that's when I was able to get it. Nice. And the, the number one seller of the Sugar Lips line is called Blue Pucker, and that one is because I and I still do this to the. To, you know, to this day, I used to like to go get a uh, blue raspberry Slurpee, or slushy, or whatever you want yeah. to call them, and I'd sit it on the dashboard and let that melt for a little bit, and then just drink that syrupy stuff at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, so that's what that one is. It's a blue raspberry. Blue raspberry is tough because you know there is no such thing as a blue raspberry. No. You have to create that, and there's uh, a combination of um, black cherry in there. There's you know raspberry flavors different flavors that you have to do in order to achieve that yeah. and I did really good with that one that one that was, that's the number one so I want to try that one definitely yeah but you're, you're, you're the slushy man aren't you Dan yeah. you'll have a little bit a bit of slush <laughs> yeah you mentioned that earlier well we'll have to make sure we get some of that out there for you yeah. so, so, so you, you, you're in the in the flows of, of get, obviously a couple of people said you can get your stuff already um, okay. uh, it would be nice to know where um, if, if anybody knows exactly where you can get it from uh, but yeah. yeah, you've got a lot in the, the pipeline then. I do, and you know, that wasn't even the intention. Again, I started this channel because I wanted to make a channel that my mom could watch and the guy down the street could watch and get something out of it. And it just kind of created its own world and started to take off. I was like, well, might as well just ride this wave. And uh, it, it has definitely made, you know, because I run a photo, video, and voiceover business, I do television commercials, real estate videos, instructional videos. Uh, I do photography, product photography. Mm. That's why Instagram photos usually look pretty good. Um, yep, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I, I, I do a lot of that. But that business has suffered a little bit because I don't have time to go out and get new business. You know, a lot of it is old business, um, that kind of thing. And, you know, so... It's a good thing that I do have a lot of things, things in the pipeline because I don't have a Patreon and all that. I honestly, I value my time with my family and my real personal time way more than I did when I first started this. And so, you know, when it comes to doing all that, I'm like, I already do enough, and I do it all myself. There's no other people that are in here helping me do all that. Yeah. So I was like, I don't, I don't even want to do all that. So luckily, the products have uh, have definitely helped. You know. Uh, and it's really, it's nerve-wracking as hell to put out a new product. When you're about to release it, oh, God, man. It's like, like a baby. Yeah. Well, you start thinking, I mean, even on this, check it out. So we did change a little bit of something on this door. See how there's little pins that are sticking out on the bottom and the top, and then there's a magnet on the middle? Mm -hmm. Yep. Holes in the mod and a magnet in the middle. Right. What I had a problem with is that after the initial... Prototypes. I was like, all right, this, this is doing good. Let's get let's get a real one. Then. So when I started to squawk it, there was this noise, a creaking noise. Like, all right, all right, all right. That was this. The plastic was rubbing somehow. Mm. I was like, we got to stop that because I know what's going to happen is reviewers are going to get this. They'll be like, yeah, listen to this. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think like a reviewer. So I'm like, yeah. I got to fix that. That's yeah. got to be fixed. We've got to do that now. So since I did that video, that has changed, and it actually worked really well. It's super secure. You only need the one magnet, you know, the, the two magnets that are on there. And then those posts, they actually kind of pop in, and that keeps it in there. So that's that keeps it real nice and secure. And, of course, we'll have different 
panels, you know, or doors, battery, I mean, yeah. model doors, this thing. Um, one of the things I'd like to see them do is Juma. Apparently, Juma comes from the UK and the EU. We don't have that over here that much, and what we do comes from there. And in China, they were like, dude, we can't get it. I was what? like, what? I mean, what you is, could get it. What is Juma? Uh, Juma is, oh, uh, jeez. It's that stuff that looks I like dragon. I like I knew what it was, and I don't really know what it was. <laughs> like, yeah, we, we know what it is. You get it down it's at like, Salford Market. <laughs> yeah, it looks like dragon scales, you know. It's like a plastic or a polymer material. Yeah. yeah. And they'll make mods out of it or doors out of it. And they also use it for pool cubes and stuff like that. I was like, well, can we just get some then from the U.K.? And they said, yeah, no. It's too expensive. When we can't get the parts in China then we can't do it, or we're going to make them out over 100 bucks. Because that's always been a concern with me, is that I wanted to make, when I first started with the Squawk products, I had gotten a drip box and the Halcyon from Lost Vape, and I was all over those, man. I was like, yeah, and then the Pico Squeeze. In the meantime, I was contacting all of my friends for, uh, yeah, Vicious, Ants, uh, Vicious Ant uses Juma a lot. So anyways, um, yeah, I was... I started looking. I called all of my distributor friends, and they were like, yeah, we don't have any squonking? What is that? I was like, ah, we don't have any of that. So then I started really digging in. Found Facebook groups where I could get one that was, you know, 3D printed or whatever, but there were 300 bucks for a 3D printed mod, and you had to wait in line, maybe get a chance to buy one, you know, that kind of thing. And I was like, no, okay. I did buy a couple of and then I was like, okay, I found Phileas Cloud in France, and I was like, ooh, yeah, I bought one of those No Fucks Given. I bought one of those, 350 bucks. I was like, man, this is just too much for all these things. But I wanted it. Um, yeah. Then I went to a uh, convention in Atlanta, and this is what the straw that broke the camel's back for me. I, I wanted to buy uh, the, um, the uh, SVA Penguin, and they had them there. They had three of them. Delrin body, DNA 75 chip. I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I want. And I said, how much? And he goes, 500. And I was like, oh, well. oh, that's that's a killer. But oh well. And I went to grab my credit card. And he goes, no, no, no. You have to take one of these little lottery tickets. And if you win the lottery, you can come buy one for 500 bucks. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> so I took the damn lottery ticket and I didn't win a spot to buy one. I was like, do you know who I am? I mean, you know, I can help. <laughs> yeah. And they do were you like, know well, who I am? yeah, I, I pulled that. It didn't work. <laughs> they were like, uh, they said, well, we're not SBA. We're a company here that resells SBA products and stuff. And I was like, God, man. So that around that time, the Pulse 22 had already come out, and I was like, can we make a mod? And Vandy Vape said, well, we haven't done that before, so I don't know. I said, all we need to do is make a uh, ABS body. That ABS is basically the same stuff that you use to do 3D printed mods, mm -hmm. but we'll make a mold. Make that, make it mech, make it so we have a cutoff switch on the inside of it, and I think we'll do fine. I think we'd sell quite a few of them. What I really wanted to do, because I had talked to Aspire, I had talked to a couple of other companies, uh, the, the other companies said to me, yeah, we don't think this is a thing. We, we don't think people will buy enough of these to make it worth our time. And I was like, well, I'll tell you what, I'll show you. <laughs> and then when the, uh, when the Pulse came out, dude, we sold 200,000 of those, well, okay. that first Pulse mech mod. <clears throat> and, you know, so shortly after that, you saw everybody was coming out with a squawk mod. So I was like, that's really what my end game was? I wanted more options. Yeah. You know? yeah, and by that I forced those other companies to see that squonking was something that people wanted to do. So one of the things I was really interested in you talking about then about the just just going back about three steps the the design when you were talking about the magnets and things like that. One mm -hmm. thing that really 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 frustrates me with vape gear is the amount of things that you buy where somebody obviously just hasn't looked at just the basics, the little things that make a right. difference. You know, you look at a, a big thing for me is the Aspire Sprite pod mod. Which is it's a fantastic little pod, right? But they have this. I haven't, I haven't got one to hand, but they have this this stupid little angly bit at the bottom, which means you can't stand it up straight. Ah. Uh, and I just think it's such a simple thing, and and these designers must be paid. I don't know how much money to to design these things. 
and don't come up with the simplest... 90% of these you can't stand up. No. But it's just... I, I, I don't... You know, there's there's so many things. We, as you say, you get a little squeak or a little click or, you know, rattle or whatever. You would think that they'd, they'd sort something out. with that. Yeah, I don't think they like me very much as far as the engineers go because I'm always like, no, 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 no. Like, no, no, that's fine. I'm like, no. That's not fun. Imagine how many Chinese shoutings there's been about that. <laughs> I am sure. That bloody Mr. Tony B. <laughs> well, I'm exactly 12 hours difference from them, too. Yeah. And they always catch me, you know, when they get back from lunch. They've had their meetings in the morning and stuff. Then they want to talk to me on Skype, and I'm like, dude, it's, you know, it's 1 o'clock in the morning here. I'm going to bed, or I'm in bed. And they're like, well, we don't have to do a video call. We just want to talk. I'm like, ah. All right, so there we go. I guess we're going to be up until 3 o'clock in the morning now. Yeah. Um, and another company with the with the case stacked, man, you know, they're a small company, so they had a couple of missteps. A major misstep, though, was in the beginning, you know, I had uh, I had told them what I wanted to, you know, change with the design, what I wanted to do, and I had said, I'm not, I'm not feeling solid with that little middle piece that's in there. Right, the divider piece. Yeah, the I'm not. Plastic. I'm not. I'm not okay with that because it's got peak in there, which is fine, and it's sandwiched between metal. In most situations, peak is fine. But I'm going to tell you right now, when you put your coils in there, you're going to want to glow them. You have to, right? So I said that's going to melt, and they no, 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 it doesn't melt. It's fine. And I was like, it does. Then let me show you. So I did a video, and I showed them. I pulsed the coils, and sure enough, that thing melted. So that's a hard short, and that is not good. Got to change that, or I'm out. Mm. I'm out. And I'll tell everybody, that's not my RTA. And they went, well, okay, well, we'll, we'll fix it. And I said, okay, well, I'm going off to uh, ECC. I said, well, we sent you another version of it. We think that we've made that peak insulator thick enough, and it'll be fine. And I was like, uh, you, you just got to change it. I want you to put the ceramic in there. Okay, and they were like, well, just try this one. If it works fine, then we'll go with that. And I was like, what? whatever. So I went out to ECC. I'm in North Carolina. That's in California, opposite ends of the country. Get all the way over there, and they said, oh, we kind of made a mistake. I was like, what? And they said, we shipped out the ones that we shipped you with the bigger peak insulator in there. And uh, they, it's gone to reviewers in the, and also to some retail in, like, Asia, Asian countries. And I went you got to recall that. And they were like, what? I said, yeah, let's have a Skype right now. And I got on there with the president, and I said, you have to recall that RDA, that RTA, because that is going to melt. I'm not even home yet. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to tell you it's going to melt. And they said, oh, okay, well, you're going to be home in a day, so go ahead and try it out. And I got home, and I tried it, melted. I went, guys, you can't make those kinds of missteps. You can't send them out to reviewers. Mm -hmm. Because that's going to happen to them. Hmm. And so they recalled them. A couple of reviewers put the video up as it was. They didn't have the melting problem, but, you know, they might not have pushed it very hard. And I was like, no, 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 that's not it. Not the final version of it. Wait until I put the video up in the final version. So there's a lot of little things that people don't realize that you go through. The Chinese companies, when they think they've got it done, they just want to be done. They're like, no, we're done. It's good. You want to get out. It's not good. you got to fix that. Because that's, for me, I'm like, I don't want to put anybody in harm's way, and I don't want to put out something that has my name on it that isn't good. So if you can't make it good, I'm out. So Just just while we're still talking, obviously we've gone a little bit over what you were going to actually stay with us. Uh, I just want to get the, the giveaway done. Um, I'm sure the wonderful Kerika will help us there. If, if I'm going to use the word uh, Tony B., um, if everybody, I'm hoping that's going to be all right, Kerry Kiss, you'll sort that out. Which the giveaway is for Vape Mail. You get a, a month's gold subscription um, to the wonderful Vape Mail. So I'm sure Kerry Kiss will set that up while we're still talking. Um, yeah, obviously, when it's, do you, you know, like the, the, the products that you have put out, you know, if somebody's had a problem with them, do you end up getting messages? <laughs> Wait, what, what do you mean if, if somebody has a problem with No, like you personally, obviously, the, it's made by Vandy Vapes, but your name's yeah. on it. Do you get people yeah, no, actually... They go, they go to me first. <laughs> yeah. like, dude, the email is service at vandyvapeusa.com. Even if you're not in the U.S., they will guide you to who you need to... You know, I fought for a six-month warranty on my products because I was like, dude, 
I don't know, man. Ninety days isn't enough. I've had things that were, worked great up until you know four months, and then they didn't work anymore. So I yeah. said I wanted six months warranty on this thing. But yeah, they they come directly to me, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook. Oh, I got leaking, you know, whatever. Yeah. Some of the one thing you have to realize is the five ten that's on this thing has to be meticulously uh, assembled on the line. People get lazy on assembly lines sometimes, even yep. in China, you know, and there was some leaking on some of them where it leaked inside the mod and was, like, showing up down here in the bottom. Yeah, that's what happens to bobsters. Yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, I get it. That does happen sometimes. doesn't mean that the design is flawed or that the actual mod is flawed, but you know what? Hey, listen, I get it. Look, Apple and Samsung are some of the biggest companies in the world that are creating products out of China. And guess what? They have bad units too. So I get it. There's going to be some bad units out there. Yeah. If there is a problem, please go to Vandy Vape. They, dude, I'll tell you this. The At least the U.S. ones, they have been so good about replacing units that people get their units replaced within a week. That's freaking fantastic for China. That's good, yeah. You don't see that out of China. Huh. So, but yeah, they come to me, and that's fine. I, you know, I, I used to answer every comment on my YouTube channel. I can't do that anymore. I just don't have the time, you know. Uh, but when somebody writes me on Facebook or Instagram, and they're like, dude, I'm having problems with my mod. I'm like, dude, let's get you fixed. You know what I mean? I don't want you with a bad mod. Bottom line. Yeah, yeah. Dude, obviously, as you were talking about the, uh, the FP before I was talking to Mark, and he's had loads and loads of people. If there's been a problem, this didn't come with this, and he's, he's sort of obviously uh, blitzed with them. He's like, well, I, I don't really deal with that sort of side of it. You've got to get in touch with them. He's, I had loads and loads of people messaging me, but this this bit, and it must be horrible having your name on something where uh, you, you, they think it's you who's actually packaged it and sent it out to them. <laughs> Right. Uh, one minute left, ladies and gentlemen. Please put Tony B in. You get a chance to win um, the the um, one month uh, gold vape mail. Also, there is codes out there for fifteen percent off Gorilla Juice and also fifteen percent off of your gold subscription. I have been put into what, chat. I'm sorry, I can't remember what the codes are. So. Um, I, th I think the, the the network code is fifteen. I think. I think it's VUK and 15 for the 15% off the subscription, and is it Gorilla 15 for 15%? I think it is. Gorilla Juice, something like that, yeah. It is, I, I, I just want to apologise to, to you, Tony, and to the people on chat about our a little mishap at the beginning of just getting the stream right, and big thank you to Dan for, for getting it right. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get a, 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 a me muted, uh, wrist slapped audio. later on. Um, but it's been fantastic having you on and to be able to, to get into the head of somebody who's actually on the other side building mods and dealing with different companies. Because obviously, like you said, you're with Keys and uh, with Vandy Vape, and it's so interesting listening to how the stages go. Yeah. Well, it can take a long time, man. From this first prototype of the Pulse Duel to what we have now, uh, there were, man, countless... <laughs> people don't even realize, you know, countless hours of like no 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 we can't do that we should do this and no we can't do that we should do this that kind of thing um so yeah i mean you know there's there's so much that goes into it and i'm sure that everybody else that has designed something with china has been through the same thing yeah somebody here uh chunk it's interesting like you were saying about that insulator and obviously they're quickly wanting to get the get it out there to people uh, yeah and you're like, like, no 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 I was like, you do realize that this is going to be really bad for your company, <laughs> right? Go ahead and put it out, but I want nothing to do with it. Uh, to finish my answer to Chunk, he had asked in here about uh, have I ever used uh, ideas that uh, that people have given me and stuff like that. Well, a good example is the, the, the Pulse V2. A lot of people said they didn't like the fact that they couldn't line up those holes perfectly, which to me I'm like, well, oh, I mean, you know, okay, no big deal, but some people it absolutely bothers. I wanted to take that out of the equation. Let's just go ahead and, you know, take those airflows out and make it actually an insert and make the outer hole just an oval. That way yeah. there will never be that problem. You know, so yeah, uh, there's been many things that people have said, you know, hey, but what I do caution people about is like, you know, don't just send me drawings of stuff. I don't want to see it because if it gets in my head, 
I don't want to, you know what I mean? I don't want to like, oh, maybe yeah. I forgot, kind of like George Harrison forgot that, you know, he, he heard the song, my whatever, from My Sweet Lord. Um, you know, I'm like, don't, don't send those to me. But advice for people that are wanting to send design ideas to vape companies, best advice I can give you is this, okay? Remember, it's China. They can pussyfoot around about it, and after you send them 10 drawings of different things, they go, oh, we actually were already working on something like that. <laughs> Here's what you do. Before you ever send anything to any one of these companies, print it all out, make a whole packet of all the stuff, all the information about your design idea, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, and send it to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Don't Seal open copyright. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's this is like a poor man's yeah. copyright. Yeah. That way, if they ever come back and say, well, you know, we, uh, whatever, thanks, but we were already thinking about that, you're like, bitch, I got it right here. Yeah. It's <laughs> postmarked and not open. Here's yeah. the thing. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And it's still not going to prevent them from stealing your idea, but people are asking me all the time, like, well, how do I work with these companies? Well, you know, Vandy Vape approached me before they were Vandy Vape. Steven Z had left Geek Vape. Mm, yeah, and yeah. they contacted me. I thought it was Geek Vape contact. And they said, do you have any ideas for anything? And I said, I do, but it's all squonk. <laughs> you know? And they were like, oh, okay, well, so that's why we started with Pulse 22. Start small, see if people buy it. And they did, so I went from there. But that's my best advice. Use caution. Remember they're China. And they do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Even to each other. Yeah. You know? There's been plenty of ideas that I'm like, dang, well, like that Hugs Vape squonk that they put out, I was like, that's a little close to the pulse. <laughs> yeah. Just a little. Even, even had this little cutout thing right here. Even had that. I was like, okay. I mean, I get it. It's a box. It's a square. And only so much you can do with it, but kind of looks a lot like it. A lot like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love Hugs Vape more than I love Andy Vape. But I didn't start any crap. I was like, no, no. it's all good. No, hey. Just to let, let people know, the, the winner was the lovely Jules Mama Vapes. I love her so much. She's an amazing woman. Um, she's won. Congratulations, sweetheart. And there will be another giveaway next week. Mr. Coyley? Uh, yes, yes. There'll be, I think we're on our last one, and I'm not sure if uh, Vape Mail mentioned a, a Christmas uh, giveaway, so I'll, I'll have another word with uh, with Mike at... Uh, Mike, a lovely bloke. Um, what you, what's your thoughts on the coiler then? We've got to ask you, Tony, what's your thought on his wonderful design? I love it. You know, it's funny because when he first sent it to me, I was like, I, I don't get it. What am I supposed to do with this thing? <laughs> I was at a convention in Detroit. Somebody walked up with one, and I said, all right, show me how that thing works. And he showed mm -hmm. me, I went, oh, crap. Well, duh. That sounds so perfect. <laughs> and... Even with Vandy Vape, you'll notice that my products have not come with their little piece that they made. Mm. He basically, you know, the designer over there is like, I don't know where I saw it, but it's a great idea, so I made that. And I go, yeah, well, it's already out there. It's the Coily, and, and I know the guy that designed the Coily. So, you know, if you can't put something in the packaging that says that it's from Coily, I don't want it in my product. And they were like, well, we don't, you know, there's nothing for us to admit. And I said, well, no, I'm not asking you to admit. Just put something on there using Coily technology. Well, then they felt like, well, then we would have to pay for that. And I said, well, just don't put it in my products. You know, I think that's just, a, mm. for me, that's that's my best way to go. But now I, I see. I found that massively commendable because obviously there's not a lot of people out there who have the scruples these days. To actually see it, and and Simon always knew that eventually somebody would copy it, and there wasn't wasn't very much he could do about it. Well, it wasn't Simon. No, no, we always knew it was going to happen, but it would be nice. And and uh, I've said to you, Tony, already. I really appreciate what you did. Um, but it would have been really nice, even if they'd just spoken to me and said, "Do you mind? You know, we we like the idea. Can we use it?" That would have been enough for me. You know, without any talk of money or anything like that, it would have been nice. You know, just for the need to put on the packaging. You know, you can use coily this size, this size, this size. Anything like right. that would have, been, right. would have been nice. But as you say, it's China, and China are, are, are a law unto themselves, aren't they? But for people who know Simon, he is the most loveliest man in vaping. <laughs> well, there you go. But that's not to say that Bandy Vape are, you know, I, you know, I, they all borrow ideas from things and whatnot. So, I mean, you know, 
they're they're no different than any of the other no, no. companies that are out there. And you know, uh, I, I I don't think that they were doing it in a uh, a malicious way or like we're we're just going to take this idea and run with it. They were like, well, we're just giving the the user another tool included in the RDA for that purpose. And I was like, yeah, it's, you know what? For me, it's best if we don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I said, okay, that's fine. They didn't have any problem with that. Yeah. I know. I really do appreciate that. Honestly, absolutely. So I mean, it's strange as well, Simon, to think about you, you it being over in Detroit, people showing it, you know, like over the pond. Yeah, I yeah. He was showing yeah. me. It's like, yeah, I got one right here. Let me show you. I was like, oh, cool. Oh, well, I was like, duh. Well, now it makes all the sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's the it's the weirdest thing. Yeah. So when well, when, when you know, when, by the way, Watofo has one in their products now. <clears throat> That's what I think. Yeah, I just today uh, was filming a video. What was it? The oh, the Elevate. Oh yeah, they have like a little bar thing in it, don't they? A little. No, they include one of those coily tools in there. Well, it's Does it's it? about that long and has mm, about five different positions in it. Oh, you, 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 you have lunch. With a little arrow pointing to the one that they want you to use. Oh, okay. Kind of like Vandy Vape, you know, yeah. so. But it's, and I also know the guy that first did the little uh, shoelace thing. Oh, on the co- yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, they were quick wicks is what they were. Yeah. Uh, and when all these guys started coming out with them, he got, he was pretty upset with me. He's like, oh, I can't believe you put those on there, you know. I, I thought we're, you know, you use my products and it was, we were good. And I go, oh, well, we are. But, you know, once the, the horse is out of the barn, it's going to run. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't yeah. stop it. No, so you know, all you can do is just capitalize on the fact that you are the original, that kind of thing. But, yeah, the same thing with food. I mean, it would be like saying that you can't make uh, prawn cocktail crisps because Skips makes them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I think the thing is, it's, I've always said, you just you concentrate on your product. You can spend all the time in the world getting bitter and getting upset about somebody else has copied this, somebody else has done that. Um, but the fact is, you just got to concentrate on your own product and, right. and, and make the best of that, and that's, that's all you can do. Absolutely, man. So, Salford, have you, um, have, you, have you ever thought about uh, making anything yourself? Yeah, you're lazy <laughs> bastard like me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I have. I have. Uh, I've thought about it. I, I want to make a pipe. I want to make a pipe because I love I love pipes. Yeah. Um, but because of where I'm based now, I can't really do that. I don't have a workshop to do it anymore. Right. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got all the ideas and, and what I want. Uh, and what have you, but I've never actually started on anything. Mm. I want one of them Sherlock Holmes ones, you know, them big ones. Yeah. 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 So you, it, it makes you look at it, because as well, you can do points, can't you? You can start pointing at people. Yeah. It's got to be better than that. Yeah. Well, it's it's not that, it's got to be better than that, I mean. I, I can just see you out in a deer stalker and you're your big shell. <laughs> Yes, and, and, and yes, here's another thing, dear Watson. <laughs> it makes you look more sophisticated. <laughs> yes, yeah, sophisticated. Oh, that's I, I, I love that. And then it's, I've only said, that. it's only said it, so... <laughs> yeah, the best thing about that, though, you know when you do it, if you, you know when you see Morecambe and Wise and he starts getting his finger at the end going, quack, 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 ah. <laughs> you, you wait for the bubble to come out the other end, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, do, Dan, have, Dan, have you ever thought about making anything? Or yeah, a few ideas. Um, no, uh, nothing that's probably going to come to fruition anytime soon. But uh, yeah, I've got quite a few good ideas. Uh, quite a few ideas. Uh, probably an idea. Well, and my time. advice to you is don't sleep on it because here's the thing: we're usually all kind of thinking the same thing, mm. you know. So, what really sucks is that if you have a great idea, and then all of a sudden you see somebody came out with it, you're like. Yeah. All right. Great. <laughs> now it's already out there. Yeah. You know. So there is there's a lot of that. So if you if you have an idea and it's a good idea, do what you can to get it made, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for all the very kind comments in uh, in chat about uh, Coily as well. Have Have you seen just while we're on? Because I know Stevie's just mentioned Coily. Have you seen Stevie's statty stands? Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, nice. It's like a piston. Yes, but yeah. my, my, I was actually using mine earlier, so it's not actually here. Yeah. That's cool. You know, we're coiling up. 
Yeah. They are absolutely brilliant, them. They are so nice, and uh, that's the Dillagaff. Have I said it right this week? Dillagaff, yeah. Dillagaff. Yeah, look at that. And I'll tell you what, Tony, he is such a lovely bloke. He is. I've, I've had Thank a you. number of years with him. He's a brilliant, down-to-earth bloke. What you see is what you get with me, man. Yeah. Um, um, just, well, so just one one other question I wanted to ask, which I don't think anybody's yeah. asked yet. Um, Tony, when is the um, Pulse V2 and the dual uh, squonk mod A going to be available? Everything is supposed to ship before Christmas. But you also have to remember, if there's a crap load of orders, if there's 100,000 orders, um, pre-orders, those are going to get filled first, all right? Also, with the Pulse V2, typically the way that it works is if you've got a kit and an RDA coming out at the same time, they try to uh, fill the orders for the kit first, and then the RDA. Uh, I was told, though, that the V2 RDA would actually be out sometime in the next week or so, maybe two weeks, shipping anyways. Uh, the, uh, the Pulse Dual Mod, that is supposed to ship, it's supposed to be delivered to retail by the 18th or 20th, so or somewhere right before the 20th. So for Christmas, technically it's in time for Christmas, hopefully a little bit earlier. We'll see how it all goes. Mm. I have a Skype meeting with them later tonight, actually, so I'll mm. find out. And did you have a ballpark figure for them? What's that? Did you have a ballpark figure for them dollar-wise, retail? Well, the RDA, it's easy to say it's going to be around 30 bucks right. U.S. Uh, and then for the uh, for the kit, I'm going to say probably around 70 to $80, 85 max. Hmm. And then for the mod itself, probably around 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Okay, cool. It's tough and because... In the U.S., it's also tough because we also ha now have tariffs that are at 25 percent on top of, you know, what you're anything you know, coming in from China. Yeah. Time, so. yeah. So there's 25 percent that they're like, do we eat it? Does the retailer eat it? Do we make the consumer eat it? So, and I think in the U.S., there's something like if it's actually a kit and together, there's an extra tariff on top of it as opposed to being separate. That's why I've seen a couple of companies recently send out the mod, the tank, and separate uh, containers, and then inside of a sleeve. Right. So it's technically separate items. So uh, the short answer is before Christmas. Okay. Cool. And talking of Christmas, what, what does a man like Tony B, or what would a man like Tony B want to get in his, uh, in his Christmas stocking from Father Christmas this year? Well, I already got my gift from my wife. Because she oh, wanted to learn. <laughs> I've been a guitar player for oh yeah, hey, uh, I've been a guitar player for a long time uh, since I was 11 years old, and she recently decided she wanted to play bass, and I was like, dude, I'm wow. totally excited about that. I have somebody to jam with, so I bought her a bass. She bought me a ukulele. Oh, uh, I live on the beach, oh, and the first song that I learned on the ukulele was uh, Hallelujah, mm -hmm. Leonard Cohen song. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's freaking awesome, dude. It is. Uh, uh, so Are you going to give us a rendition? That. What's that? You going to give us a rendition? I would, but I don't have it up here right now. I can go get it. <laughs> you yeah, want to hear it? it? Go get it, yeah. Yeah, go but hear it. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Um, obviously, as well, this is a, a, um, not very often you see Tony B play a ukulele, <laughs> but it is the Late Late Vape Show, and obviously we have got the um, charity as well. For We haven't worked out what we're all doing. I know, Mr. Coyley, you've been giving away Coyley's... Um, and is it a bit of a raffle you've been doing? No, no, no. I just literally said my, my Black Friday was um, you you can buy a coil, you can pay whatever you want, but you pay whatever you want to the to the VUKN charity for, for mind. So please make sure you cut it's it's um, a fantastic charity man. Make sure that if even if it's a couple of quid and even if you haven't got the money, just promote it. Get it out there. We're gonna all four of us are gonna come up with something silly to do. I don't know whether I'm gonna wear a bra. <laughs> something like that, but See, it's right cool. then, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Wow, that's that's nice. lovely. Electric. We got a fishman pickup in here and everything. Tuner Sweet. built in. <clears throat> All right, so you guys ready? This will be my swan song for tonight. Ready? Yeah. Right. Well, let me start over again. <laughs> <laughs> 
We'll One more time. I've had a couple. Yeah, I've had a couple as well. <laughs> I've had a couple of beers here, so. Yeah. <laughs> Concentration in his eyes there are absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I was like, oh, right. I just realized we have come to the midnight hour. And what more would you like from the Late Late Vape Show? You had Tony B playing a ukulele. You yeah, don't get that shizzy in everywhere here. We will pass this. Nobody's seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> Exclusive. We want to get this up and make sure you check out the charity. Mind the, the, the network is sorting it all out. Um, make sure you. We're going to do something stupid over the next couple of weeks um, to raise some money. Um, what we're going to pass straight away off to, we're going to go first to our wonderful Salford. Uh, I love you, brother. Say, t- say your goodbyes. Bye. thanks to all the guys who come in tonight and and definitely thanks to Tony and and going through uh, the mod in the uh, RDA as well even though I have watched the video (laughs) because I'm a chick (laughs) Uh, thanks to Simon and uh, Aidan and Dan for having me back on again and for you guys putting up with me uh, which always makes a change because you know I'm I'm such a quiet guy (laughs) And that all I'm going to say is, night night, guys. Night night, guys. We'll pass it over to the Foxhound. Nice to have you back, brother. Yeah, it's been nice to be back. Um, I think I'm going to just do a quick announcement because I, was, I said to Simon earlier I was going to do it, but obviously oh, it's yeah. a bit busy. Oh, yeah. So um, it's, I've <coughs> been, been a bit busy, obviously, with work and stuff, but um, also another reason for me being quiet is. Uh, me and my partner are expecting a baby, so we're uh, 15 weeks in now, um, so yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, brother. I didn't know Thanks. you had it in you. <laughs> That's what he's been <laughs> doing for the last four weeks, isn't it? What? No. That's why he's not been on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, Don't worry about it. Wait till you get so married, good. it all stops then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good all. Uh, looking forward to it. So, yeah, um, thanks guys for um, the show. Sorry I haven't been around and that. Thanks, chat, for uh, being a great audience as always. Thanks, Tony B, for being a great guest on the show today. And, uh, yeah, Captain Coyley and Little Brave Apes, nice to be back with you guys. <laughs> Always nice to have you. We'll pass it over to the most loveliest guy in vaping, you know, I love so much. The one and only Simon, Mr. Coley self. Say your goodbyes, brother. Thank you, darling. Um, it's been a fantastic night. Uh, thank you to everybody in chat. Uh, you've been superb. Again, I've been terrible in chat again. I'm, I'm one night, I'm going to be able to say I've been really good in chat tonight. So, anyway, I apologise. Um, thank you so much to Tony B for, for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. We've been chatting for a, a few months now, but you are, again, such a gentleman, such a nice guy. Um, been an absolute pleasure chatting to you and being able to get you on the show tonight. Really, really appreciate that. So I know you're a, a very, very busy man. Um, thank you to uh, Mr. Salford again for coming on. Who is? Oh, we've got another announcement to do as well. I never about around yeah. times and everything else. Um, <clears throat> so thank you to uh, to Mr. Salford for for coming on. Thank you to Dan. Good to see you back uh, eventually, and we'll uh, we'll see you again hopefully next week. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to check that one a bit. Uh, <laughs> and thank you to the wonderful my my. I, I won't use your phrase. Brother from but, another book. Brother, yeah, that's that's the one. Thank you so much, Aidan. Um, obviously, it's been a, a, another brilliant night. I really enjoyed it, and thank you to Tony as well for the uh, for the little rendition at the end. We need to get uh, we need to what we need to do next. Get Tony back on. We can have Tony playing his ukulele. Salford on his harmonica and you singing out. We'll have a, a, yeah, but we'll a go for it. I've got my acoustic yeah, guitar sitting right next to me. <laughs> oh, <there laughs> I, I was half tempted to join Tony, but I uh, didn't want to. I think uh, you've been doing enough strumming just to lately. I think about the sounds of it. There's, there's Ladies and gentlemen, our special guest, the one and only Tony Beeks. Say your goodbyes, brother. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it, man. And Simon, it's great to, uh, you know, to finally put a face with uh, the Skype. You know, you know how that is with Skype yeah. and stuff. But uh, yeah, I've uh, a lot of respect for you, man. I think what you've made is a really cool little device that 
makes everything so much easier when you're building, and I think that's really cool. So that's why I uh, really stood behind you on that. I was like, eh. But you guys are all a bunch of good blokes, and I appreciate you. Anybody that wants to send me some crisps, maybe. <laughs> uh, there's a few other little foods that, like, I need some HP sauce. Can't get that. Yep. <laughs> what crisps do you want? Uh, I want, uh, well, definitely some Skips prawn cocktail. Yeah. I also like the Walker's prawn cocktail. Different kind of chip, crisp, but yeah, uh, like those quite a bit. Uh, Space Raiders. Oh, oh Space Raiders. <laughs> I also Space like Tim Tams, and there was a few other ones that. He's I started to mouth of water in there, wasn't it, Tony? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I haven't had dinner yet. It's dinner time. So I'm like, oh, oh man. But oh, skip. Wait, someone here says that skips are on Amazon. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure between me and Mr. Coyle we're going to be able to get you a box of goodies. We'll so we'll yeah, I'm good. sure we're going to be able to do that. Cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the end of the show. You have all been fantastic. There is a big, big announcement. We are moving times. So we, we are changing name as well to not the late, late vape show. We are moving to the slot of 8 while 10. Staying up to this time of night every single Monday and you're like waiting to get to it. It has been a little bit hard work for all of us. So we are going to like move the time down to, to sort of like the 8 to, eight till 10 slot. Um, so That's please like stick around next week. Here. I, I can time. actually do that. <laughs> you can do it, yeah. It's a little bit easier, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit late. So I, I'm so sorry if you've been enjoying the late nights of it. But um, Mr. Coyle is getting a bit old. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say a big shout out to Salford, mate. I love you loads. You've been fantastic. And it's ace to have you on the panel. Dan, it's nice to have you back. And congratulations um, for the new baby on the way. Um, hopefully he'll call it after one of us. And we've got the wonderful Mr. Coyle. I love you so much, mate. You are the most loveliest bloke in the world. Tony B, it has been a pleasure to have you. And you, again, I'll, I'll tell you the story just quickly. The man had been saying hello to everybody at, at Vape Jam, and he was walking out the door on the Saturday night, and he still had 10 minutes to talk to me, shake my hand, and take a photograph. And that, that, that means something to me when somebody's had a full day of everybody coming up to you. So I appreciate that. You were a yeah. genuine man, and I wish you all the luck with everything that you're doing. Um, thank you. Thank I you very much for being on the show. Hey, you know what? The you bottom mean, line is yeah. what's that? Sorry, no, you're right. I was about to carry on, but go on. I was going to say, if you see me out at a show, definitely don't hesitate to stop me and talk to me. I've had people message me afterwards and go, ah, you were kind of busy. I didn't really want to bother you. I'm like, no, that's why I'm there, all right, because it's because of you that I'm able to do what I'm doing, and I'm super grateful for that. So, yes, please stop me, talk to me. Uh, you know, I'll be happy to talk with you. We'll get a picture, whatever. Just if my smile looks weird at the end of the day, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm smiling yeah. much. By then. <laughs> yeah, and it, I, I, honestly, like, I've met him a couple of times, and, and he, he is as genuine as, as he is on camera. Um, and it was really nice of you. And again, thank you so much for being on the show. People in chat, you make this show. Thank you so much for turning up week in, week out. You make this chat. Thank you so much to Kerrika and the network for looking after us. I do apologise, everybody, for the beginning of the show. These things happen, um, but we got there, we carried on, um, so we love you all. One, yeah. one other thing, Mr. Salford. What? What was Mr. Salford? Mr. Salford will be joining us oh. every week from next week onwards as well, as well as moving to later clock. You'll have a lineup of usually four people. Four of us. Yes. Mm. Four you said Salford, I thought I'd forgot something then. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd already said it as well. Yeah, so we've got Salford has joined the panel. I thought I did say it a bit earlier. Um, he, is, he has joined the panel and he will be here week in, week out. He's a lovely bloke and we love him loads. Once again, thank you very much to everybody who has stuck around us tonight. You are all stars. We love you loads. And we'll see you next week on the brand new time of 8 till 10. People, look after yourself. Good night. Press Good night. the button, Dan. Adios. Bye. Thank you.